welcome our next speaker, Mr. Deepak Chhabra, CEO, STEM Site India. Sir, may I request you to join us on the stage? I would like to call upon Dr. K. K. Valuri, Director, Balaji Institute of Telecom and Management, to welcome our guests with the bouquet. Thank you, sir. May we now call upon Ms. Akanksha Sharma, Student Manager BITM to introduce our guest. A very good morning to one and all present. It is my proud privilege to introduce our guest speaker for this session, Mr. Deepak Chhabra. Mr. Deepak Chhabra is CEO of STEM Site India based out of Ahmedabad. STEM Site India is world's most experienced cord blood stem cell bank. Prior to joining stem side, Deepak sir has held leadership positions at Scott Edel Pharmacia Limited, Bharat Serums and Vaccines Limited, Boston Scientific Corporation, Speciality Ranbaxi, and GlaxoSmithKline. Deepak sir is an alumni of Nasi Munji Institute of Management Studies. Sir, the dice is all yours. Students, I would say good morning rather. Okay, it is my great pleasure to be here and I would like to thank the Balaji Institute Management for calling me and addressing you all. You all had a very interesting, if I may say so, a very colorful session with songs and videos and I am going to talk about something very serious just now so be prepared for a little serious talk in the next few minutes or whatever all right i represent the biotechnology segment and i'm talking in biotechnology the buzzword today is stem cells most of you would have heard about stem cells and most of you would perhaps be also having some idea about stem cells anybody here wants to volunteer what stem cells are anybody wants to volunteer what they understand about stem cells yeah, please go ahead. What does the word stem cell mean to you? When you hear stem cell, what does it strike to you? What sir, meanings do you get out of the word sir, stem cell? Yeah, uh, go ahead, please. Go ahead. When a child birth, uh, then stem cells are preserved for the later use. Like, like uh, if he has some deficiency or I mean some disease, it will be cured by that stem cells. It contains, I think, in the umbilical cord. Okay. Anybody else? Generally, we talk about just stem cells in general, not about umbilical cord, blood only. Generally, what do you understand by the word stem cells? Anybody? Very good, very good, very interesting. Anybody else wants to have a chance to speak up?
Okay. Well, stem cells mean a lot of things to a lot of people, as some of you know. All of us, to give you a very small example, all of us have got stem cells in our body. To give you an example, if suppose you have a cut in the body, right? If you have a cut in the body, you know what happens? Immediately you find stem cells rushing to that spot and you find after a few days the wound heals by itself. Though you may apply some ointment, etc. But the stem cells are the ones which rush to that site on their own and they heal the body. That's what normally you would understand about stem cells. That's the smallest example I can give you. And as all of you understand, yes, stem cells have the capacity to repair, to grow different organs and also to repair in our body. The richest source of stem cells comes from umbilical cord blood. As I said earlier, all of us have got stem cells in our body. But at the same time, when a child is born, at the time of birth, there is an umbilical cord which connects the child to the woman or to the mother. This umbilical cord has got blood. This blood is known as umbilical cord blood and this is the richest source of stem cells. So today, in the scenario that we are living, this cord blood is collected and stored at minus 196 degrees temperature, which is stored in huge steel tanks under nitrogen. And when we store this at minus 196, it can be preserved for as long as you want to. And as and when you want, these cells are retrieved, meaning they are thawed, brought down to room temperature, and then they are injected in the same person, which we call as autologous. And if it is injected in the same person, we call it autologous. If it is done in somebody else, then there is something called as matching. As you all are aware, we have blood groups, A, B, O, etc. You might have heard of all this. So in case of stem cells, they do a HLA matching, human leukocyte antigen matching. And if the matching is there, then this could be used in somebody else's body also to repair or to make an organ. Okay. Now going forward, I'm going to make a small presentation to you all about our company, Semside. This is Semside India, which is headquartered in Gujarat and Ahmedabad. We all know the Indian flag. This company was formed under a vibrant Gujarat program in 2007 under the auspices of our Prime Minister, Mr. Modi. We all know India is a country in the Southeast Asia, seventh largest country by area, second most populated after China. And we have 29 states and seven union territories. And we have leaders like Mahatma Gandhi, Subhash Chandra Bose, Sardar Patel, etc. Uh, this may be surprising to you. We have almost 78 spoken languages in our country. And we have a rich culture. We are proud of our ancient literature. We have IT companies which are doing pretty well across the globe. Now, this is something very interesting about India. We have how much? 42,000 births happening in our country, right? We are building almost one Australia every year. Australia has a population of almost 24 million. This may surprise to some of you that we are building one Australia every year. We have a large number of engineers, new engineers, which are graduating every year. It's almost 1.5 million, almost more than 50,000 doctors, new doctors we are talking about every year. And some of you sitting here would be graduating, I'm sure, after some time. So we'll be adding to this number of almost 100,000, that's one lakh per year. And the best part is the literacy rate, which is going up in India, in the youth, it's almost 90%. All of you, I'm sure, are competing with each other on even half a mark or one mark. So just to briefly touch upon what are stem cells. Well, stem cells are the original cells that retain the ability to renew themselves through a process called mitotic division, and they can differentiate into diverse range of specialized cells, right? There are three characteristics regardless of the source. One is the long term, this, which are self-renewal. They are unspecialized, and they can differentiate into 
specialized cell types there are three types of stem cell that we are known uh, which are known today one is the embryonic stem cells now embryonic stem cells are banned these days in across the globe there have been a lot of studies which have happened and they have been banned we talk about non embryonic stem cells adult stem cells and when it is to the fetus we call it the fetal stem cells what are their properties let's have a look the properties of stem cells are for cell renewal for differentiation and we are also talk about multipotent cells which make precursor cells and then they are differentiated and these stem cells are a must for our daily repair as well as for repair of damaged tissues you know when the skin peels off in the winter as you must have seen the stem cells come into force and they repair the skin cells on the body the different types of cells which are available in adult and fetal these are in adult we have two kinds the hemopoietic which is blood and the second one is mesenchymal they are derived from mesenchymal throat and same thing we have in the fetal so there are four different types of known cells today with various levels of therapeutic applications the adult stem cells they are obtained from these sources one is the bone marrow we all know that we have a spinal cord on our back in the spinal cord there is a marrow or there is a soft uh, blood kind of a thing which is bone marrow and then in the blood from the blood also they can derive stem cells which we call as peripheral blood the third one is adipose tissue all of us have got fat tissues in our body from the adipose tissue or from the fat cells you can derive stem cells and it is also from the skin and now from the dental pulp also we all know this disease i'm sure some of us have heard about it or all of us have heard about it which we call as blood cancer and it is known in uh, parlance as thalassemia what is thalassemia in thalassemia we have the normal red blood cells like all of us have and when these cells are malformed or they do not mature properly they develop into a disease called thalassemia now all of you might be aware in thalassemia the problem is very serious when a child is born right today in most of the states they are doing a thalassemic test on the parents before the child is born on both mother as well as father and if these are thalassemic cells they find they call it thalassemia beta or major major thalassemia and then they advise you to not to go for a baby because the chances are that the child could be thalassemic but still it happens that people go ahead and then when the child is born it has got thalassemia which is that the red blood cells cannot be formed there is no cure unfortunately for thalassemia in our current times what happens in thalassemia you have to go for a blood transfusion meaning every fortnight every month you have to take the child to a blood bank right or a center where they transfuse blood from outside in the child normally the child will survive till the age of 12 or 15 and they die mostly they die at the age of 12 or 15 that's average there is no cure for this disease called thalassemia but stem cells can cure thalassemia which is a very encouraging part right if you find a child which is suffering from thalassemia there what they do that they transfuse stem cells after doing hla matching and i'm proud to say that semcite as a company has done about more than 2000 odd transplants across the globe in about 43 countries in india we have done about almost 45 transplants of blood transfusion of these kind of cases thalassemia and other hemopoietic disorder that is blood disorder and the children have been cured <coughs> 10000 children are born in india every year who are declared as thalassemic which is a large number and the population is growing unfortunately there are certain states like gujarat which has a large population almost 7% population where their children are thalassemic and we have almost 2000 children in gujarat alone which are born with thalassemia major that is one of the reason why we started our operations in amdabad in gujarat so that we could look after these children to treat these children not only across india but the major state gujarat where these children are born we also train the hematologist hematologist is a doctor who treats blood disorder right so we also train some of these hematologists to treat children with these kind of disorder 
let's look at another disease called sickle cell now what is sickle cell this is another disease which is a blood disorder where again there is no cure at present and number of children go undiagnosed this is another big problem if some of you recall our prime minister mr modi was in japan a few years back where he was talking about the treatment for sickle cell anemia which exists in india unfortunately with the stem cells it's a severe hereditary form of anemia uh, anemia as you all know is where you have less hemoglobin in the body so this is a hereditary form where it comes from the parents in which a mutated form of hemoglobin disorder uh, distorts the red blood cells the red blood cells don't grow and hence they are not formed in the body and therefore you have a loss of blood in the body and the disease is called as anemia as per uh, who uh, almost 3 lakh children are in india with sickle cell which is a very large number we have almost about 67.8 million patients of sickle cell and there is very little what is happening in the country for sickle cell treatment and stem cells offer a cure for this also in gujarat itself we have about close to 66 66000 patients of sickle cell now i come to the history of semcide semcide is a company which was born in 1997 in uh, california in us it's a us company and then the company was started with a mission that we would do public banking now what is public banking when a child is born as you are aware the umbilical cord is thrown as a biological waste so semcide said no we will collect this cord free of cost and we call it public banking it's like donation of blood so we said donate your cord your child's cord and we make a bank and today we are proud to say that we have close to almost uh, 75000 units available across the globe with us in public bank after this was done it was found that you have a genetic difference between india asia china and us so it was decided that if it's a chinese population what do you do so semcide established semcide taiwan in 2000 with the purpose that we should have genetically diverse public cord available with us throughout the world and that's the reason the third company was formed in 2010 in india so now we can cater to the needs of any child across the globe for any kind of disease which can be cured with stem cells because the genes vary from chinese to asians to americans and to european so we are proud to say that we have a genetically diverse units almost 75000 units available with us for treatment for any child across the globe now when we started this company in india in 2010 we were looking for local partners so we found two partners apollo group of hospital and kerala pharmaceutical in ahmedabad where we partnered with them and these two partners worked with us very closely in semcide we all know about the jv partners apollo hospital everybody has heard the name this is a chain of hospitals which was founded in 1983 by the chairman dr pratap reddy and apollo has almost 64 hospitals across the country and they are having a turnover of almost 700 million you can multiply this with 7 to get into crores and they have been the first in india to receive international health accreditation by the american joint commission international kerala is another big pharmaceutical company founded in 1951 which has a turnover of 270 million they are spread over 90 countries and they have a workforce of more than 7000 people including 200 employees in africa cis countries and us and japan these are some of the usps which we have as a company where we say that we have the highest quality standard we have a hybrid plus model meaning we are doing private banking and public banking when i say private banking those parents who want to store their umbilical cord blood with us and pay we call it private and where they donate we call it public right and uh, we have a international presence highest transplant experience globally plasma depletion technology which is a technology which is patented and we are active in clinical trials we done as i was saying almost 2000 plus transplants across the globe in 43 countries and india we have done about 45 and all are successful 
it's interesting to note that there are a large number of transplant centers across the country who are doing these aims we all know in delhi ganga ram in delhi bhel kapoor in delhi then we have apollo hospital chennai we have another hospital called miot in chennai hyderabad apollo calcutta apollo this is mangeshkar hospital in pune ruby hospital in pune sayadri hospital in pune sarling hospital in ahmedabad and gujarat cancer research institute in ahmedabad so there are a large number of centers across the country who are doing these transplants these are some of the salvert hematologists or physicians who have done these transplants across the country one of them is dr revti ra she is a very renowned uh, pediatric hematologist in apollo chennai and dr samir bakshi is another renowned uh, pediatric hematologist in aims hospital and they have done in different indications as you can see some of these are very very rare diseases and of course all these diseases which are listed out are not curable at all but they have been cured with stem cells we are very happy to say that so many lives have been saved because of use of stem cells Now these are some very interesting children who have undergone these transplants, and each one has got a small story. This is a boy, uh, Nivelesh from Malaysia, who is the child of a labourer. Now this person uh, came to India with small funds to Apollo Chennai, where this transplant was done, and he was having uh, a syndrome called Griselda syndrome with HLH, which is again not curable. so they did a fundraising program in malaysia collected some money and they came to india for treatment now the doctor concerned called me at that time to see that if you could find a suitable match in our public bank inventory for this child unfortunately they didn't have funds so we told the doctor to go ahead and don't worry about funds and we gave them something like at half the price whatever they had that money at that time i forgot about the incident and after a month or so the doctor called me again to say do you remember this child called nivelesh from malaysia i said yes i do you had called me some time back so the patient is going to be discharged today and it's disease free so it was a very very happy moment for me that we will be able to cure such a patient the parents had lost hope and they thought that this child is going to die and we are so happy to see that this child survived and has gone back to malaysia and hopefully doing well this is another child called netik who had uh, thalassemia major and this child again we are happy to say that every year he comes to us with the parents and we are happy to say that he is going to school now he is 5 years old and living a healthy normal child this is another patient called mokshit same thalassemia major he is transfusion independent doing very well now this child girl child aditi in bangalore is a very interesting case uh, the wife after she conceived she went to the gynecologist and the gynecologist advised her a thal test after she conceived unfortunately it was discovered that she has a thal major right she was thalassemic major so the parent were advised that they get the husband also checked husband said i am fine i have no problem they said no please get your test done and they found that the husband also had thalassemia the child was born and after a couple of days the child would not be able to speak up would become blue and uh, the parents got worried and they were running around here and there trying to search what can be done for the child uh, i don't remember the company but this parent i think he was working with the uh, it company and uh, he went across to various hospitals in bangalore couldn't find anything and then on the net he found our name and he called us that look this is what it is what should i do we said you go to the nearest place in chennai and find out if they can do a transplant for you they went to chennai they were not very happy they said can we go out of the country we heard of this dr jiang in taiwan we said yes we know him very well because we are a company which is connected with all the hematologists across the world he went there to taiwan and uh, the doctor said you have to come and bring your child then only we can make an opinion he spent a couple of lakh rupees to be there with the child and they said yes the child can be cured but the treatment is going to cost you something like 20 to 25 lakhs now he was perplexed because you know a person who is working he would not have that kind of money so he appealed to his company they gave him a loan then he appealed to us what can we do 
So we talked to Dr. Jiang, got the hospital discounted and at the same time we said the cord also which we found in Shemside, Taiwan was discounted heavily and the transplant went through. After the transplant is over, the child came back to India and after a couple of months when I met them in Bangalore, I was so happy to see the child running around and disease free today. Right? So this is what it is. What stem cells can do can really be wonders and imagine the parents delight and happiness when they see the child walking around, running around like a normal child. Now we talk about what's going on in the stem cell treatment, the therapy and the trials. Now we have a team of doctors working with us in US. This is one of the doctors whose name is uh, Dr. Wise Young. He is a pioneer on spinal cord injury. All of us understand spinal cord injury. We have some relatives, some friends or some people known to us who have had a trauma, who met with an accident and at the same time they are lying in bed for several years. Now what we are talking about is that treatment is possible with stem cell in spinal cord injury and these patients who have not walked or even got up for a couple of years so these trials we have completed in Hong Kong and China in about 70 patients with almost 80 percent success and now we are going to start these clinical trials in India right once we start these clinical trials in India which is basically to prove that Indian patients can also recover then the door is going to open in another disease called spinal cord injury where people who can't get up who are lying in bed can be cured going forward so what is this what we are doing in this case the spinal cord injury trials we are conducting in these hospitals Bombay hospital in Bombay Neurogen hospital in New Bombay Apollo hospital Chennai and Kokola Ben Ambani hospital in Bombay these are the doctors there is a team of 30 doctors who have been trained they have been sent to Hong Kong and they have been sent to China where they have trained and where they have understood how these trials were conducted and they have come back very delighted and happy they have shortlisted about 24 patients where this trial will hopefully start by the end of this year we hope the trial would be completed in about 12 months time and hopefully going forward then we will find that this cure is also made available in India so the future is really bright in the stem cell industry going forward and this is where I end and uh, before I take questions I just want to uh, emphasize upon what are the opportunities available in stem cell industry as you would have seen <coughs> that the stem cell industry we are talking about sales marketing quality assurance scientists doctors and as you can see also that we are talking about technicians so there is a large scope available in the stem cell industry going forward and the the best part is that you work for an industry where you can make people smile the other part is that you are almost saying that you are going to be saving somebody's life imagine a patient imagine a parent where they are undergoing a trauma because of the child and there is no cure they have come against a wall and here comes the stem cell which is like a khulja sim sim if I may say so where the child is treated cured and leads a healthy life today so many children are suffering from blood cancer normally what we call as thalassemia there is AML, ALL, lot of blood cancers are happening across the country and if you go to any hospital you find maximum number of cancer patients at the same time you find suffering and you feel very sad what can you do this is the way you can contribute to the stem cell industry by being a part of this industry where you are helping people to save their lives and going forward we are conducting a number of trials in US on diseases like Alzheimer you know about Alzheimer when the body starts shaking cerebral palsy where you have seen children who are born where they start leaking and they, they, they don't have a control it's a neurological disorder when they are born we are talking about uh, myocardial infarction we are talking about serious diseases where there is no cure available and it's really a very uh, uh, bright future if I may say so because so many trials are happening in the industry and what breakthrough will come forward will be seen perhaps by your children right so this is where I stop and uh, our team in uh, HR would be in touch with your staffing team or selection team etc and we'll see how if you can look to offer some placements to some children here any questions <laughs> Thank you.
Now the forum is open for questions. Good morning, sir. Up here, sir. Up here, sir. Can you just sir, raise balcony. Yeah, just raise your hand. <laughs> balcony. Sir. Balcony, yeah. sir. Ah, ah, okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. okay I'm sir, sorry. as you have uh, shown sickle cell anemia, sir, uh, in that uh, the the stem cells which is used first, the main thing is you regenerate the new blood and just trans uh, transfer it to the patient. But in case I have uh, seen the genetic things also, sir, human genome project which is done and started in 1984 and completed in 2000, nearly 2000, sir. So in that, it is found that uh, valine has been replaced by, uh, arg arginine is replaced by valine on the 21st position of ge ge genetic, on your RDNA. So sir, don't you think in future, as stem cells is very limited in that, that part, but a new segment is also coming up which is known as personalized medication and which will eat this whole industry in future? The answer to your first question about sickle cell is uh, that in sickle cell we don't replace the blood but we provide stem cells and these stem cells repair the malforming blood cells so that the body starts working normally. Right? Regarding genetic disorders and genetic Think there are lot of things which are happening which are clandestine, some are legal, some are illegal. So I would not like to make any comments on that because you know number of things are in clinical trial stage, one and secondly there is lot of hype. You know you hear in newspapers somebody's liver got repaired, somebody's heart got repaired, somebody's hand got repaired. So all these are just one off cases. There are no studies. A study is when you involve a group of patients and it is published. Otherwise, it's all hearsay and if I may say so, it's all clandestine. We have uh, almost 269 or 369 clinics across India alone who are saying that you come to me, I'll repair anything and everything at a cost. And these are all fly-by-night kind of operators which is run by doctors and which is run by a lot of people who, if I may use a very strong word, cheating the public because of their ignorance and innocence both. Right? So, I would not like to make any comments on the genetic part just now because these are still stages which are in trial. So, it's not right on my part to make any comments. You see, as I said, there are trials going on on so many diseases as I mentioned to you cerebral palsy, Alzheimer, diabetes, etc. And number of, there are thousands of trials across the globe happening in various indications. And plus there is an advancement. They talk about mu cells. I mean this forum may not be the right forum and not the time for me to comment because lot of advances are happening in the stem cell treatment itself. Okay? Uh, yes, please. Uh, good morning, sir. Sir, here. Uh, sir, I am Pallavi Purwal from Senior Operations Batch. Uh, you just said about uh, spinal cord injury trials. So, uh, like, uh, are the uh, is there any medication available outside India, or it's uh, being tried for first time in uh, like whatever you are doing for in in those four centers? Uh, these trials are already over in Hong Kong and China in about 70 patients with almost 75 to 78 percent success. And after having success, uh, seen success there. We are conducting these trials in India going forward and also in United States and Europe. But I think the first approval will come in India and then followed by US because there is a lot of documentation you have to do before you, you know, approach the DCGI. DCGI is the Director General of Drug Industry here in India whom you have to approach and you, the manuscripts and the paperwork is immense. It takes you years to prepare that. So we are working on that for the last two years for the paperwork in India. And we hope that everything will get cleared by the end of the year so that we can start trials by the next year. These trials have already been successfully conducted outside India. Okay, sir. So, how, roughly how much time uh, will it take to go through the trials and results in India? I wish I could answer that. It's a very difficult question because the process is very long. You have to get approvals from the local DCGI body. And then the selection of the patient is not a problem because there are lakhs of patients available. And then the protocol has to be followed. And it normally takes anything from one year to 
24 months to complete the studies. Hello. Morning, sir. sir. Uh, I would like to ask uh, about the embryonic and non-embryonic stem cells and uh, why are the embryonic stem cells banned? I don't know anything about it. <laughs> uh, this is not the right platform to give you all the answers, but still I will attempt. Embryonic stem cells were found to grow like cancer and they were also found to have lot of other properties and that's why uh, it was stopped in US and across the globe. So there was a lot of hype some years back on embryonic stem cell, but it has now been banned across the globe. Hello, sir, upstairs, towards your right. Okay. So, uh, good morning, sir. Uh, sir, is there any age bar? Like, uh, can, uh, can senior citizens could be, uh, could, could avail the service of? For stem cells, for like, uh, if they are diabetic, so uh, is it possible? Well, as I said that the stem cells which are stored are stored at the time of birth because that is the richest source and the stem cells which are stored at the time of birth give the, have the highest potency. So when these cells are stored, they are stored with HLA typing, like the blood grouping, like when you go and donate blood if you are A, B or O, it's, you know, labeled and kept in the blood bank. So similarly, when we store these stem cells in the public bank, right? Right, because in public bank people are donating. In private, it belongs to me because I have paid for it. It's like a locker. The key is with me. Only I op can open the locker. So when it's private, I have paid. It can be used for my child or for my family only with my permission. Correct. In public, when we ask for donation from only in Gujarat, we are doing the public because it's a very expensive exercise. So these cells are stored with HLA typing done. And then if a diabetic or a hypertensive or a spinal cord injury patient comes to us, we do the matching, HLA matching. Correct. And once we find a match, we give it to them for treatment as you mentioned just now. Okay. Thank you very much. That's how it works. Hello, sir. Good morning, sir. Yeah. On the street, sir. Backside. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Good morning, sir. My name is Arvin Yada from BITM Marketing Batch. So I wanted to know that uh, what is the difference between the private bank and the public one? Very interesting question. When a parent comes to us and they say we are ready to pay for my child at the time of cord blood collection. That's known as private banking. It is stored with us at a cost and it belongs to that individual or that family and they hold the key as I said, it's like a locker. I hold the key when yeah. we so are. So it will be given to them only the. Absolutely right. I hold the key. That means only I can open that locker. That means only I can give permission to use it for my child or for my family. For public banking, which is a very expensive exercise because there is no government help or any state government help. So we are doing it at our own cost and it's a huge expensive exercise. We spend about almost a million dollars, about seven crores per year on public banking. So we are doing only in Gujarat where we have tied up with a couple of hospitals where the children are born and where they throw the cord blood as a biological way. So we request them that can we collect at our cost. And there again, the criteria of storage is very high. Almost 30 to 40 percent gets rejected on quality issues. And when this is stored with us at no cost, then it is known as public banking. We are trying to build a bank in India. We already have about 75,000 across the globe. As I said, we are in three places, India, US and Taiwan. Combined, we have about 75,000 units available to us in public bank. So if sir, anyone's demand that uh, the that, uh Caught a stem cell, the is that chargeable? The Absolutely the right. There is a charge when it comes from the public bank. There is a charge. Give. Because there is a cost involved in storing. Due to the constraint of time, this was the sir. last question. Sir, my yeah. name is Aditya. I am from BITM Marketing Batch. So my question to you is: uh, Say an organ is having an, uh, some uh, means defected cells. So can those cells be replaced with? Uh, New cells or what means, uh, how can we cure the defected organ? Can you repeat the question? Sir, say an organ is having a defected cells, some of uh, the cells uh, which have been defected. So can those defected cells be in replaced by new cells or uh, how can we uh, means? This is what the trials are going on in across the globe, you know. They are still not able to find all the answers. But yes, stem cells, as we know, have the capacity to repair and to build a new organ, right? So there, there are a lot of trials which are in progress to determine this itself. It's just a question of some more time. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir, Thank for you. providing detailed information about stem cells.
and the process of preserving different cells. We learned about adult stem cells and the difference between normal blood cells and thalassemic blood cells. You also mentioned about sickle cell anemia. Sir, also gave an insight about the initiatives taken by the different organizations for the welfare of society. It was indeed a learning experience for all of us, sir. May I now request Professor D.S. Kadam, Director Project and Alumni Affairs, to present a memento to our guests. <laughs> 